This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So we've gone through and seen quite a lot of measurement within our financial statements coming from the accounting standards that is wanting us to measure the asset or the liability at fair value. So when we've looked at IS16, property, plant and equipment, if we adopted the revaluation model, we would remeasure that asset to fair value. On uh, financial instruments, IFRS 9, uh, financial assets are measured at fair value through profit or loss or fair value through other comprehensive income. Uh, you could have financial liabilities that are at fair value through profit or loss. So again, it is getting us to measure it at fair value. And there's a lot more fair value measurement that, that comes into other accounting standards as well. But they're the two main ones, if you like, that you see at this level. You can throw in the IS40 investment property as well, if you so wish. Okay. So we need to therefore have a standard about fair value. And this is the, the strange thing about the ISB initially was that all of this measurement was coming in at fair value, but there wasn't anything actually telling us what fair value actually was. Okay, So it just allowed a little bit too much subjectivity, too much judgment within your financial statement. So what we've done now uh, is to go through and bring in an accounting standard that covers fair value. Now, do just be very, very careful. If you are to look at IFRS 13 in detail, there are some aspects of it that don't cover particular accounting standards, but I'm not going to worry about that just now. Okay, so there are some standards that are outside the scope of IFRS 13, but for you and I, the ones that we've covered in terms of property, plant and equipment, uh, investment property, and was it their financial instruments are within the scope okay anything else you can worry about later when you get to strategic business reporting so that's why we now have a standard we have a standard to go back to the measurement principles within the framework that goes through there and then support what you see within other accounting standards so that then brings around first of all what the definition is of fair value uh, so fair value, if we look at it from an asset perspective, is looking at what you would get if you were to sell an asset uh, in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. So we're looking at conditions that exist at that reporting date. We're trying to base it upon a market because if there is a market, there is likely to be a fair price at which that asset is being traded for okay likewise the value of a liability is how much would you pay on the market to transfer that to somebody else okay uh, again it's looking at the conditions that exist at that measurement date okay uh, and the key bit there is once we've got that definition with the focus on market participants is that we can then bring about this hierarchical approach, okay? By starting off with a market-based valuation and then looking at different valuation techniques that come down and rely less and less upon that market. Because what we can then go through and do is we can then generate a fair value for our asset and our liability, but what we can then go through and do is we can disclose to the users of the account how we have then measured that fair value. Because if the fair value comes around from a market-based observation, then there is more, if you like, certainty regarding that valuation. But if it comes from observable inputs that, that go into the valuation that aren't market-based, it, it's still a, a valid method, but you can identify as the user of the account that there is a little bit more uncertainty attached to that valuation. So what we've got there is when we're looking at the level one, two, and three, so this hierarchical approach, we will look and see if the asset or liability is there under level one. If not, we will then look to fair value it under level two. And if not, then we'll go through there and think about your level three. Okay. 
So, level one, remember, going back to where we were there with regards to the definition is that we're focusing on market participation. Uh, so, therefore, we want to go through there and look at market participation in level one. So, you're looking at quoted prices on the market and that market needs to be active. So, when we're talking about an active market, high frequency, high volume. Okay, so if we're looking at an investment that we have in shares and that investment is quoted on the London Stock Exchange, then we are going to use the value of the share at the reporting date quoted on the Stock Exchange to fair value our financial assets, that investment in shares. Seems logical, seems fine, doesn't it? Nothing wrong with that there. However, what happens if the asset or the liability isn't there? on a quoted market so it's not there on the stock exchange well what we need to go through and do there is we can still base it initially upon an active market but it could be that that active market has a similar asset to ours that we are looking to value okay so it could be that you are maybe looking at uh, an investment that you have uh, within a particular area of business and maybe there is a very similar business to yours that is actually quoted so therefore you will go through that and use that similar quoted business as your starting point to, to measure the fair value the other scenario there so that is focusing on the active market so bringing it back down to that definition of market participants and participation maybe you can have an identical asset or liability but what you may have there is that it is not an active market that you are not subject to regular volumes or regular frequency of trading and again you just draw that to the user's attention to say well look this is that the most recent most up-to-date fair value that we have there haven't been a transaction for a little while, but but that's quite useful to go through there and have. So particularly if you're thinking about property, plant and equipment under the fair valuation model, you could have an identical office building uh, to the one that you currently own because you're on a, uh, a business park, but the market isn't active. Okay, There's not a high frequency of transactions. Uh, there's not a huge volume that happens. There might be a sale every other month okay and that will give you evidence of your fair value okay the other one particularly then uh is if you don't have a quoted price there is no market maybe you could go through there and use your prices that are observable directly to the value of the asset so maybe you could go through there and try and value maybe investment in debt uh, by using yield curves, interest rates. It's getting a little bit too advanced financial management and financial management for my liking. But you can use the term structure of interest rates to go through there and think about what's going to happen to the interest rates in the future. Are they going to fall? Are they going to go through an increase? How does that therefore then impact today's market value? Okay. I really don't think at this particular level of financial reporting that you're going to see too much about that there okay and then because you can sort of see now whereby in level one we started off with an active market level two was saying well look there is an active market but it's not identical or maybe it is identical and there is is not an active market or can we link it into something that is involved in an active market such as your your, your interest rates that are dictated therefore by market forces that will help us value that asset or liability to whereby we totally ignore the market at all effectively okay so level three is looking at your unobservable inputs okay so there's virtually no market activity whatsoever so here from a financial reporting perspective we're pretty much looking at fair value using discounted cash flow techniques so looking at say interest receipts interest payments discounting them back to present value to work out the fair value of the financial asset or the fair value of the financial liability 
Okay, uh, so there's nothing there that you can actually observe directly that gives you a quoted market price. There's nothing similar. The asset, the liability that you have is, is quite unique in terms of its structure and its nature. So you need to work out something based on unobservable inputs, which effectively to you and I is your discounted cash flows. Okay. Uh, one small point to note, particularly with regards to revaluation of property, plant and equipment, potentially investment property as well. That's whereby you could have different potential uses for that identical asset. Okay, so that there's no active market, but there are different uses as to what that building can be put to. Well, what you go through there and would look at is the highest and best use of the asset. You might think that that is being not prudent. Okay, but we're not, we're not thinking about prudence here. We're thinking about logic. Okay, yeah, what? What would be the, the logical valuation that you would go with in terms of your use of your building? That's how you would use it, wouldn't you? You would use it to generate the most benefit for the business. So therefore, that is going to form the basis of our valuation. Now, having gone through there and spoken about IFRS 30 and fair value, it, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get it into any particular exam question, I do think. I do think it's much more suited to strategic business reporting, whereby there is much more explanation and discussion around the accounting standards. So here you might get a non-computational question in, say, uh, section A. Uh, you might have to work out maybe a fair value of an asset or a liability in section B, and then the, the follow-on to that might be to get you to identify what level of fair value that is is it level one is it level two is it level three and then it could be maybe a small discussion based question uh, added into the end of a published company accounts question okay but i just don't think that there's going to be a huge amount of marks attributable to ifrs 13 fair value all you need to know is the definition of fair value and then those three hierarchical levels that we base our fair value upon and then making sure there that if you have a choice of fair values you go with the highest and best use of that asset there we go higher for us 13